Hello, welcome back to Bite Size Coding Time with the Port Moody Public Library. Today, we're going to take a look at how to draw in Scratch. Now, drawing in Scratch is one of the funnest thing out there. Funnest is not a word, I don't think, but I'm going to use it anyway, because it's just so much fun. A few weeks ago, we showed you how you can create your own sprite by uploading an image or a photo. So if you missed that video and you want to know well, how can I make myself the main character of my story and game, you can take a look at that video and see how to do that. And today we're going to show you a different way to create your own sprite by drawing. Now Scratch has drawing tools built in so we can do all your creation right in Scratch. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the basics and then next week we're going to take our skills that we learned today one step further and create something a little more complex. So let's take a look at the basics. Now I have opened up a scratch project. I don't have any sprite yet, so let's make one. So I'm going to move my mouse to the bottom right corner, but instead of clicking on choose a sprite from the library, I'm going to click on the paintbrush up here and create my own. So once you click on it, you'll notice that I have created a sprite right there. It's empty right now because I haven't drawn anything yet, but it has opened up my costumes tab so I can start drawing. Now, these are the tools that we'll be using when we are creating our own sprite in Scratch, when we're drawing in Scratch. The first one we're going to explore today is this one up here called the brush. So you can see, if you put your mouse next to the icon, it will show you what they are called. So this is the brush tool and it's used when you want to do some free form drawing. So let's click on it. It will turn blue to select it. And what I have up here are options to customize my brush. The first one here is fill is the color of the paint that I want to use. So if I click on the arrow here, it will give me a sliders and I can choose from all these colors what paints I want to use. So let's make like a little blue color. And then over here, I can change the size of my brush. So how big I want my brush to be. So right now it's a 10. So let's see what that looks like. You can see if you move your mouse onto your canvas, there's a little blue dot. And that's about how big the size of the uh, of my brush is right now. So let's draw a character. So I'm just using my trackpad on my computer to draw this snake thing. I don't know. Um, you can adjust the size of your brush if you don't think it's big enough. So uh, let's make 30. And you can also like just type in a number or click on these up and down arrows to change the size. So now you can see my lines are a lot thicker like that. Now, if I zoom in, you can see because I'm using my trackpad on my um, computer, using my finger to try to draw. The lines are not very smooth. They're a little jaggedy. Um, so, but that is what the freeform brush does. So it just lets you freeform draw. And maybe that is the look that you want, or maybe you want something a little smoother. So we'll kind of show you different options on how to do that. Now to get rid of what I draw, I can click on the undo button up here, and then that will remove what I did. And now let's explore the line tool. So this is a free form line, so you can go wherever way you want. And But the line tool, as the name suggested, lets you draw a straight line. So I can change the color of my lines up here under outline. So same thing, I can uh, change the color. If you don't, if you only see white or black, move the two bottom sliders all the way to the end. And then that way you can see the whole rainbow of colors for you to choose from. So let's make it like a little pink and I'm going to um, make it easier to see. So change it to 20 again. And this time you can see what I can do is straight lines, nice straight lines. Undo and let's explore the next two tools which let us do shapes and not just lines. So we have the circle tool and the rectangle tool. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and you'll notice that now all of these are active 
for me to choose. So I can choose the color of the fill, which is the inside of the rectangle, and the color of the outline, which is the outside of the rectangle. So if I click and draw, you will see that I will now have a rectangle like that. Now, this tool also lets you draw square, perfect square. But to do that, what you need to do is to hold down the shift key on your keyboard. And then while you're holding that key down, click and drag. All right? And so you can see now I am stuck and I can only draw squares and not rectangles. Once you have done a drawing like this, you can see that there are now an outline surrounding your shape. And at that outline, you see this is blue and it's got these like circles in the corner and also on the sides. And what those lines do is they let you resize your drawing. So if you have done a drawing and you then want to sh change the shape of it or change the size of it, you can use these little corner tools to help you do that. So when you move your mouse over any of these dots, you notice that your mouse change from a arrow to sort of a double arrow. And when you see that, you can click and drag and you can see now I can squish my rectangle or stretch it out. So same with these ones on the side. And anything on the angle, on the, sorry, or not an angle, on the corners, you can then change the sizes to help you resize it. And what I find really useful for these is that sometimes it's easier to see what you're drawing if you make it big first and then you can resize it. So then that way you can see and get the details in and then shrink it to the size that you need. Now there's one more um, handle here. You can see at the bottom here, um, if you move your mouse over it, you'll notice that it turns into like a hand shape. And when you click and drag it, it will let you rotate your shape. So that is the rectangle tool. I am going to get rid of it. Now to select the rectangle, so you can see now because I click out on any of the empty spot, I don't have the handles anymore, the ones that I just used to resize it. So to bring those handles back, you can use the select tool, which is this one right here. And then when you click on that and then click on your shape, you bring those handles back so you can continue to change the shape of it. Once you have the shape selected, you can also click on the delete button rather than doing all the undos many multiple times. You can just click on delete to get rid of the shape. So the circle tool works the same. You can see I can draw any kind of ovals here. And if I want a perfect circle, again, hold down the shift key on my keyboard to do a perfect circles. All right, so now I have a oval, looks maybe a little bit like an egg, kind of. But what I want is in my game, I want to drop eggs onto the floor. And maybe somebody down at the ground will have to rescue the eggs. But if they are not fast enough, the eggs is going to hit the floor and it's going to break apart. So I want an egg that looks like it's broken. So how do I do that? Well, there's one tool that I can use to help me with this, and that is the eraser tool. Now the eraser tool, like the name suggested, is to help me erase bits and pieces of it. And this comes in really handy if you want to make multiple costume, just like what I described with the egg. But let's take a look at how the eraser tool works. When I click on it, you can see that I can choose the size of the eraser up here. So I'm gonna make it bigger. Um, let's say 30. And then you can see when I move down to my shape, I have a white circle following me. That is my eraser. So I can, for example, make a hole in the middle of my circle here. And now you can see now I have kind of like a, a donut shape maybe, right? And when I select the shape, you can see the whole thing is one shape because I just erased little bits of it. But so this is still remains one complete shape. Now let's undo, 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 undo. Whoops, undo too far. Let's do the 
egg again. So now I have an egg. Now to make it a broken egg, I'm going to want to create a new costume. So to do that, I move my mouse over to the icon where I have a one costume, right click, and then duplicate, which means making a copy. So if I click on that, now I have two costume and they're both based on this oval that I drew at first. Making sure that you have costume number two selected. I'm going to click on the eraser one more time. And this time I am going to make it a very tiny line. So just a tiny little teeny tiny eraser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break my egg apart. So let's do that. And you can see now I have broken my egg up. So if I code this to change costume from costume one to two, it will look like I have a broken egg, a crack egg. But not only that, something interesting happens if I use the eraser and I use it from sort of like the outside of the shape all the way to the outside to cut it in half. What happens when I do that is that if I click on the select tool, you will notice that if I click on my oval now, it actually broken the egg up into two pieces. Unlike the donut just now, these are actually two separate shapes now. And I can actually move them apart. So you can see now I look, it really looks like I have a crack egg. So it has turned my oval, which is one shape, into two. So that's quite interesting what this eraser does. But not only that, now you can see maybe you can create shapes, different shapes out of this. Because when you look at it earlier, I introduced you to the line tool, to the brush tool, and a rectangle and a circle. But you will know that a lot of times we want to create things and they're not perfect circles or squares. So one of the ways you might want to adjust it is by using the eraser. So. If I click on this, right, by using the select tool, click on it, get rid of that, and select tool again, select this other remaining shape, turn it around, and then maybe I add some circles. You can probably guess where I'm going with this. Circles, circles, and maybe give it a mouth. Well, what do I have now? I have a weird ghost shape, right? I have a ghost character by using an oval and eraser. So maybe you can now see, huh, that might is an interesting way to use a eraser. I can actually create different shapes by simply changing the original circle or rectangle. So today we did four, we, we explore four tools, right? Four drawing tools. And you're like, okay, yeah, I can see. I can see drawing, making some fun characters out of this. But is it all? Because like, do I have to erase bits and pieces every single time? If I want something that is more irregular? Ah, uh -uh, of course, Scratch has more tricks up its sleeves. And to find out how to do more irregular shape and make them look nice so that you don't actually have to do freeform drawing every time and have those little squiggly lines and, and we want something smooth like this ghost that we have created, stay tuned for next week and we will show you how. So until then, happy coding. Thank you again for joining me today and we'll see you next week. And I hope you have fun playing with the tools, the drawing tools in Scratch and create some amazing characters. So please do share them in the comments. If you make them, love to see what they look like. And next week, we'll continue our drawing adventure. Bye.